Hello everybody and thanks for joining us today. My name is Jason Lotzer and I'd like to welcome you all on behalf of Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Dakota to the COVID-19 coverage webinar. This update is for all employers on what Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Dakota is doing to help you keep employees covered and healthy during these challenging times we're going through. Know that we're doing everything we can to keep your business healthy from a financial perspective. This webinar will cover how we're doing both. Just a note, if you didn't attend the last webinar, it was recorded, so you may want to check that out on the Blue Cross ND YouTube channel. For the agenda today, we'll be discussing COVID-19 testing options, extended wellness benefits, telehealth utilization, medical and pharmacy coverage updates, and finally, premium and eligibility extensions. To stay on top of things, we have resources to keep you updated as things change. You can visit bcbsnd.com slash COVID-19 for more information. We're going to continue to host webinars like this as things change. Uh, the news from Blue's emails will continue to be distributed. Um, you can also visit the BCBSND YouTube channel. And finally, if you're an FEP administrator, please check out fepblue.com. A few housekeeping items before we get started. Everybody will be on mute during this webinar, but you will be able to ask questions at any time. If you look at the GoToWebinar panel, you'll see a tab where you can type your questions in, and at the end of this presentation, we'll answer as many as possible. Um, so please ask as many as you can as we go through this. And just a note, um, We'll only be answering questions related to the agenda topics we're covering, um, so other questions will be answered later or offline. So I'd like to introduce my fellow panelists who will be presenting today. Mike Carlson, the Director of Employer Consulting and Wellness Services. Chris Kalesa, who is the Director of Sales and Marketing at Blue Cross Blue Shield North Dakota. And Dr. Greg Glasner, our Chief Medical Officer. Thanks again for joining us today and your continued trust. You can take it away from here, Dr. Glasner. Hello, thanks for attending the webinar today. I'm Dr. Greg Glasner, Chief Medical Officer of Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Dakota. And I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the testing for coronavirus and coverage for the testing for the coronavirus. To set the stage for this, I think we've all been uh, affected by the coronavirus pandemic and how it's affected our society and from everything from going to the grocery store to school to work, and now that we're starting to talk about returning to work, I think that we need to talk a little bit about you know, what is covered under uh, your health insurance and then what should be covered under a public health perspective. Historically, there's been two types of testing for viruses. Uh, the first being molecular testing. <clears throat> that would be the uh, that would be the most accurate test. It's a polymerase chain reductase molecular diagnostic test. It detects genetic material from the virus itself, and in this case, to specific to COVID-19. There are several of these tests available. In fact, there are several of them coming out as fast, as, as so fast it's hard to really keep up. These are all done under the EUA or Emergency Use Authorization designation <clears throat> through CMS. And so uh, I think one of the things to, to keep in mind throughout all this testing uh, dialogue you hear is that some of the tests are more accurate than others. Some of them haven't been fully vetted to historically to what we would expect tests to be vetted through the FDA and, uh, they, and to be able to rely on their accuracy. So some, some of these tests just aren't all that good right now. Like I said, uh, the molecular test detects genetic materials directly from the virus. And one of the limitations on this test is where the test is obtained from. In other words, the nasopharynx, the, the lungs, the, the, the mouth. Uh, and certain, certain times of exposure are more accurate for detecting when the virus is actually present. For instance, the nasopharyngeal test is useful for the weeks one through five. Some of the other ones are, 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 are longer, some are shorter. And then after a certain period of time, even if you have coronavirus or had coronavirus, you can test negative using the molecular testing if it's beyond the window when the test is most accurate. That's uh, where mainly where the false negatives occur to this type of testing. The second historical common type of test is called serolo serologic testing, and that's the test for antibodies, which are the, the body's response to the virus, uh, to a particular virus. In this case, it'd be the COVID-19. Uh, 
this is an after you have the virus, your body mounts an immune response to that. And then it tells you if you, first of all, have are able to mount an immune response. And then depending upon the type of antibody, depends on you know how long uh, the, the, pre, the prior exposure has been. There are two basic types of uh, immune uh, responses. And one is called IgM, which is usually the first response, or the, that's called the fast antibody, that's usually detected in weeks one through five. And then there's one called IgG, which that's the, usually the long-term body response to viruses. It usually isn't present until week three, and then sometimes that can go from years. That's often what's tested down the road to test if you're immune to a particular, uh, a particular virus. These uh, can be uh, done pretty rapidly, the serologic testing, and there are certain kits out there, and there are several of these tests as well. Uh, the one limitation with uh, serologic testing or antibody response is that you can have cross-reactivity with other similar types of viruses. For example, if you have other coronaviruses, you could test positive for, uh, for positive antibodies if you've had another coronavirus other than COVID-19. So none of these tests are exactly perfect. And that's one of the that's one of the issues with testing. A third type of testing is now called antigen testing, and this is a relatively new type of diagnostic test. It 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 looks for a very specific type of receptor on the virus, usually a protein, and it's usually right now I think the most common ones look for the spike you see on the TV commercials of the coronavirus itself. It's it's one of the advantages of, of antigen testing is that it allows for very rapid detection of the virus. It can be done as, as in as little as 15 minutes, called point of care testing. There are chances, the higher chances of false negative tests with this type of testing. However, this could be done in a widespread manner. And this has the option to be done at home. There are some new tests coming out for antigen tests. In fact, this is also under the EUA uh, process of uh, emergency authorization use of testing. Uh, this is the one, this is the type of test you might hear about where you can test at home, send in the kit, and then determine if you have, have particles to the, uh, the virus itself. Coverage for testing, in my opinion, falls into two distinct buckets. One is medical necessity. Blue Cross and Blue Shield has uh, made the determination that it will uh, waive cost sharing, co-payments, deductibles, for medically, necessity, medically necessary testing for COVID-19, which includes testing for things like this influenza or other respiratory tract issues that, that go along with helping to establish the diagnosis of COVID-19. These tests would be determined medically necessary by the provider that, 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 that you're seeing. Uh, we've also reduced or uh, relaxed the out-of-network requirements for procedures when testing in areas in, for, for, for members that are out of the area and for out of network for providers that are providing care to the members in North Dakota. Uh, we've also relaxed the prior approval process for medically necess necessary testing for COVID-19. And we also have a dedicated helpline for calls for questions about just what COVID-19 and, and is what members benefits are during this pandemic. The second bucket, bucket to this is public health testing. <clears throat> I think it's dependent of the Department of Insurance, along with Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Dakota, that public health testing should be a federal and state uh, uh, process, where if you're going to screen and test the general public just to see who has had or has coronavirus uh, from a public health standpoint, th that would be a federal, uh, federally covered uh, process. You know, specifically when we're talking about a return to work program, public health surveillance testing isn't necessarily considered medically necess necessary and therefore is not covered under the insurance program. We feel that should be covered under uh, federally, federal, the federal programs under the stimulus packages. That, that's a brief summary of the molecular test, or the types of testing that's available for COVID-19. And I hope I've made it clear enough that what we're trying to cover from a medical necessity uh, position under your health insurance versus a public health surveillance that should be under the federal pro federally funded programs. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Glasnick. Again, this is Mike Carlson, Director of Employer Consulting and Wellness at Blue Cross Blue Shield, North Dakota. And we also wanted to do another reminder that COVID-19 related uh, wellness benefit items that we've extended uh, for parts of 2020 and 
to some degree throughout 2020. Um, <clears throat> you know, BCBSND has extended these benefits because we want to get you and your employees back to work healthy and productive um, as soon as possible. We all know that quarantine has taken a toll on physical fitness and the isolation is taking a toll on mental health. So well, some, some of these wellness benefits have been adapted for social distancing and we'll highlight a couple of these items now. Wellbeats. We've talked about Wellbeats in the past. Wellbeats is the streaming fitness that's available now to all members. Um, it includes hundreds of high quality engaging fitness classes, workout plans, fitness challenges for all levels and ages from children to seniors. Classes are streamed on demand from a mobile device or tablet. <clears throat> Previously, this was an add-on service available to uh, specific employer groups who have purchased it, but well WellBeats is temporarily available now to all members. Members will have free access to WellBeats until July 31st, 2020. To access it, simply download, download the WellBeats app or visit portal.wellbeats.com. And you can see the invitation code on the screen, which is 8AA10681. That'll be needed to register for this free access. Learn to live online therapy. So again, back to a pandemic, which is uh, being partly addressed by social distancing. Uh, and this is creating isolation, anxiety, and stress. So if your employees are like most, they're assuming the emotional consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yet most people won't seek the help necessary to live emotionally healthy lives. That takes the toll on your employees and your business. Through the remainder of 2020, BCBSND is extending to all members free access to engaging effective online therapy programs for <clears throat> stress, anxiety, and worry, insomnia, substance abuse, depression, and social anxiety. Through our partnership with Learn to Live, your employees can get life-changing digital programs and coaching to master their emotional health. Programs are based on proven cognitive behavioral therapy techniques and have touched the lives of more than 3.5 million people nationally. Participants can access the therapy platform by using a specific code. How does your organization receive a code? It depends on your type of health plan. For self-funded self plans with 400 or more employees, Learn to Live has emailed a unique code to share with your employees. For self-funded health plans with less than four employees, your BCBSMD account representative has emailed a unique code to share with your employees, which you can see up above is BCBSMDSF. For fully insured plans of all sizes, your BCBSMD account representative has emailed a unique code for you to share with your employees. And as you can see on the screen, it is BCBSMDFI. If you no longer have your code, reach out to your account rep and we encourage you to share this with your employees. Telehealth updates. Not a lot's changed since we did our last uh, presentation on this uh, particular topic, but as we're trying to avoid uh, exposure to COVID-19, one avenue or channel of care is online visits. They reduce the strain on our healthcare system and limit unnecessary spread of the disease. Your employees have a couple of options for using telehealth. First, your regular provider may have a digital care tool. Check directly with the provider and the organization to see. The other option is Amwell, our partner for telehealth services. They've long been offering live on-demand video visits from, from a smartphone or a computer and users give them high regards. More in just a moment on how to enroll. As you can see on the slide, we've got the uh, increase in telehealth claims that really started ramping up on March 1st uh, for the Blue Cross Blue Shield North Dakota Book of Business. Um, in the blue, you can see all the telehealth visits that are not COVID-19 related. And it's hard to see on the slide, but you can see in the tables to the left that there have been a few COVID-19 related telehealth visits. Roughly 2% of our telehealth claims have only been COVID-19 related. Um, but even though not related to COVID, there's been an uh, exponential increase in the use of telehealth services since the pandemic as families and people are staying home having access to this service is providing to be useful. For self-funded health plans, um, cost shares are waived for care related to COVID-19. Additionally, if using Amwell for care, we'll waive cost shares for all urgent care visits. For FEP and fully insured group business, 
will waive the cost sharing for telehealth visits for nearly all services, whether they, they use AML or a local provider uh, telehealth services. These services include things like urgent care, office visits, physical therapy, speech therapy, behavioral health and substance abuse disorder treatment, diabetes education, and nutrition counseling. Following the guidance put forward by CMS and the North Dakota Department of Insurance, few, a few telehealth services um, in, that uh, are still available, but cost shares are not waived. And those would be deferrable elective care, chiropractic care, dental care, and acupuncture. For fully insured individual lines of business, the first time employees use AML site, they'll need to go through a simple enrollment process. During that process, the system will ask them for a service key code. They'll want to use the code BCBSDFI in order to have cost shares waived. Thank you. And now let me turn it over to Chris Kalesa, our Director of Marketing. Thanks, Mike. Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Dakota cares about the health of our members and all North Dakotans. So we've been closely monitoring the COVID situation and continuing to collaborate with the North Dakota Department of Health, the North Dakota Insurance Department, and other state officials. We've even removed several of the barriers that are present with other medical services. So I'll highlight some of those in a couple of slides. About a year and a half ago, Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Dakota and VSP Vision Care partnered to offer employer group vision plans. During this pandemic, VSP has offered to its partners, Blue Cross Blue Shield, essential medical eye care using the VSP providers. Even if you don't have a Blue Cross Blue Shield VSP policy, Blue Cross Blue Shield North Dakota members has access to this essential medical eye care. There are actually 6,000 plus providers open nationwide and 21 providers open in North Dakota. And you can find a doctor at the VSP website. And it's being offered through May 31st. Here are some of the reminders of COVID-19 coverage. Remember, it's retroactive back to the beginning of March. Services must be consistent with CDC guidelines. Some services might require reimbursement or the provider can resend claims that they need to now include the diagnosis of COVID-19. Testing and coverage require no pre-authorization but must be CDC endorsed. And there's no cost share applied to testing and coverage services. If an employee is diagnosed with COVID-19, out-of-pocket costs for covered services will be waived for all fully insured business. Many self-funded employers have even opted to waive the out-of-pocket costs as well. Then early refills are still allowed for prescriptions and up to 90 days for those maintenance drugs. This chart illustrates the COVID-19 claims utilization as of last week. It includes those claims that were sent to Blue Cross Blue Shield with a diagnosis of COVID-19. You'll notice the total number of claims received and processed, total number of services included in those claims, and the total claims dollars paid to date. The rate per 1,000 claims received here is 4.25 since March. Also included are some of the reminders related to premium extensions and eligibility. You know, this is to help protect the health of your business and your employees. For small employers, which is fewer than 50 employees, you still have 62 days to make your premium payment as opposed to the normal 31 day requirement. If you can pay your premium, of course, we urge you to do so, then you won't have that double payment next month. And if your business is large with 50 or greater employees and you need to delay a payment, please contact your Blue Cross Blue Shield rep. You know, it's important to note that the grace period is not a premium relief and that premiums are still owed but that you'll have a longer time to pay those premiums. Some businesses around the state may need to reduce hours or lay off employees. So Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Dakota has been allowing greater flexibility and eligibility requirements. As long as those premiums are paid, we're going to work with employers to keep employees on their health plan, even when their hours fall below current eligibility guidelines. And as of April 7th, we started accepting credit card payments from small employers to help aid in their ability to make those premium payments. This is an option available through the employer portal and e-bill. We will also allow employers to remove or reduce those current probationary periods for new employees. This allows those new employees access to their health plan a little sooner. You know, if you find yourself making the hard decision to lay off employees to survive this pandemic, they actually might qualify for the premium relief through the federal government's advanced premium tax credit program. 
Loss of coverage is a qualifying event. You can actually learn more at healthcare.gov or feel free to have them reach out to Blue Cross Blue Shield. We have a line dedicated to that and it's 280-BLUE. And stay tuned for some more information which will be shared on additional options through our News from Blue e-newsletter. We'll send that out as soon as we have it ready. Now I'll turn it back over to Jason so he can take some questions. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. Um, and thank you all, Chris, Mike, and Dr. Glasner, uh, for sharing that information. Um, at this point, we'll go through some questions that uh, have come in. Um, just so you guys know, we've had uh, 250 employers join us across the state today. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, we hope you found the information valuable that we've presented today. Um, there was a lot of questions coming in about will the slides be available after the webinar and yes this live recorded um, event will be uh, available on our YouTube channel um, following today's presentation so um, you can go to bcbsnd.com um, and get to our YouTube channel from there and you'll be able to view that um, after this is complete so uh, if you have questions or there was some codes in there for, for uh, Amwell and telehealth. If you want to see those, um, definitely be able to get those for the YouTube channel. Um, and again, please ask questions in the questions panel. Um, we have a dozen or so that have come in um, before the event and live today. So we'll, we'll start going through those. I'm going to do a quick sound check here. Uh, Chris, are you still there? Yes. Hello. And Mike, are you there? I am here. And Dr. Glasner may or may not be there. We may have lost him for a second, but hopefully he'll no, join I'm us. I'm here. Again. I, oh, you are, yeah, Dr. I'm Glasner. Here. Hello. Yeah, I got disconnected out here, but uh, I'm back now. Okay, thanks. Um, so, you know, as, as we go through this, um, you know, if, if you ask additional questions, please do so, and we'll get to them in a timely fashion. You know, we have this scheduled till 11:15, but uh, we may end early if we get through all the questions early. So. Uh, the first question I have, though, is for Chris, um, and it comes from Nancy. Can we require staff to be tested prior to returning to work? Thanks, Jason. Um, so just to first start off, I'm not providing legal advice. However, um, you could, as an employer, require staff to be tested. Again, remember Dr. Glasner highlighted the fact that uh, testing um, assuming that it's medically necessary, um, that could be covered or may not be covered. So depending on how it's being done. So uh, as far as requiring staff, and if you're going after the, the fact that if you have them tested, then they could return to work, please remember that the test is only as good as when the test was taken. So if they took their test yesterday and now they've gone to the grocery store and other places, now they could have been exposed to other people and, and the COVID virus itself too. So um, I guess just keeping that in mind, um, but then again, maybe check with legal counsel too, just to see where you stand on that. I'll sure. turn it back Th to you, Jason. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, I have another question for you, Chris. Uh, does all the information presented at this webinar apply to self-funded groups? Oh, good question, yeah. So much of it does. So we did highlight some of the, the fact that testing, of course, there's waiving of the cost share for testing purposes for all fully insured and self-funded. And then as far as the wellness benefits, the extension of WellBeats is out there for all self-funded and fully insured, as well as the extension of Learn to Live through the end of the year. So um, those on top of, uh, in the coverage reminders, I highlighted the fact that several self-funded employers have even opted in to waive the cost share for any treatment related to COVID. And uh, again, several of the self-funded groups have, have told us that's what they wanted to do. So then we're processing claims, waiving that, co that uh, cost share in regards to that treatment. So back to Perfect. you. Thanks, Chris. Um, Mike, I have a, a question that came in for you. Will Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, continue to provide coverage for teletherapy virtual counseling or will there be an end date and when? Yeah, thank you, Jason. It's, it's a good question, and it's a commonly asked question. Um, right now, we are dictated by North Dakota mandate, so it's kind of a, a nebulous date, but uh, through their mandate, uh, coverage 
are waiving a cost share and the expansion of the benefits will last through the emergency period. So that'll be dictated by uh, our state regulations. So at this point, the end date is unknown. Um, we'll continue to communicate through uh, BCBS and D account management to let you know when we're hearing from the, the state on when that emergency period would technically end. But for right now, we have no particular end date. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, Chris, I have a question for you here. Do we need to notify our participants of any of these changes that are happening? Um, thanks. Uh, this is a good question too. We we hope that you will tell your employer employees about the changes, just in case they didn't hear of it. But they too can can access our website um, and see what the updates are. Many of them probably have already inquired too. Should they just be kind of anticipating something happening? But um, definitely let your employees know or let them know of the resources such as our, our Blue Cross Blue Shield website and our coronavirus page specifically. Thanks, Chris. I have another question here for you. Um, will the flexibility in enrollment parameters, so employees working less than the normal required hours, go beyond June 1st? Yeah, that's a really good question. And at this time, I don't have an answer of if it will go beyond June 1st, but we are reevaluating that here um, pretty much as we speak. So once we have the um, go ahead for an extension or or not to extend, we'll, we'll let you know via our Blue Cross Blue Shield website, um, specifically the COVID page. And then probably also through our news from Blue e newsletter. We share a lot of information that way. So many of you, of course, are subscribed to that. So we'll be able to notify you in, in a couple of different ways. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Chris. And a lot of you should be seeing the, uh, the COVID-19 update resources slide up here as well. So as Chris referred to, the news from Blue emails will continue to go out. Um, and, you know, for relevant timely information, we're keeping the bcbsnd.com slash COVID-19 um, webpage updated. Um, so that's a, a great resource. Um, we'll continue to do these webinars. And then again, uh, the YouTube channel, these recordings will be available afterwards. And then if you're an FEP administrator, please check out fepblue.com. So, um, Mike, I have a, a question for you here. Um, it's maybe a little bit redundant, but you may have covered a little bit of this, but talking about AM, can you talk about AMWELL again, um, the cost to employees and how long the no copay will be in place? Yeah, thank you, Jason. So as I just mentioned, the no copay, our cost share waiving will occur until the emergency period ends as per guidance from uh, the state of North Dakota. Um, specific costs to, to members, so again, for self-funded plans, um, regardless of AML or not, <clears throat> all cost shares away for anything related to COVID-19, which if you can remember on that uh, graph I showed you, is a pretty minimal amount of uh, COVID-19 related uh, visits for telehealth. Um, but for self-funded groups, specific to AML, <clears throat> we'll also waive cost shares for those urgent care visits. So things like a sinusitis, earache, pink eye, et cetera, or, the same through the emergency period, our plan is to continue to waive that for our self-funded groups. For fully insured groups, it's a little more robust because nearly all services, so regardless of uh, pr your primary care physician, if they have a digital care tool or AML, and those are things like office visits, PT, speech therapy, behavioral health, diabetes, nutrition. Um, and again, those will last, and those cost shares would be waived, so zero impact to the member. Um, and that'll last again through the emergency period. Thanks, Mike. Um, I have a, a two-part question here, and I think, uh, Chris, you could take this, but um, also if Dr. Glasner, if you have anything to add. Um, the question is, will antibody tests become a covered ser service? If so, what type? And then is there a limit on furloughed worker eligibility? I think I'll address the furloughed worker eligibility first. So um, we're allowing that, you know, the, the eligibility requirements for employees to be um, pretty flexible right now and kind of a, a, a date is is through May, May 31st, but again, we'll update everybody on that date as it might change, of course, as we reevaluate here. Um, and then if you have specific questions out there as employers, feel free to reach out to any of the Blue Cross Blue Shield reps that, that you've worked with, and they'll be able to help you out with, with information related to that too. And then as far as the antibody test becoming a covered service, um, 
Dr. Glasner highlighted that, you know, as long as those tests are medically necessary, that's when they are covered. Um, so I think I'll let him probably address the, if so, what type part of that question. Dr. Glasner? Yep, thank you. So right now, you know, if, if it's medically indicated, it would be determined by uh, by your provider what type of test you would be, we ordered, and then those would be covered. Most likely, people are going to be looking at the IgG antibody because that's the, that would infer immunity. Now nobody really knows how long that potential immunity lasts if you're positive for IgG. It just hasn't been studied yet. But historically, for other virus tests, you generally look for IgG for long-term immunity. So that would the, the test that would be ordered would be determined by the provider, and if it's medically indicated under diagnosis and treatment, then that would be covered. From a public health perspective, uh, I think that there are federal dollars that have been allocated for testing and that as an eligibility to return to work, and that would really be, de be determined by the public health response to uh, the testing of returning to work. Thank you, Dr. Glasner, and thanks, Chris. Um, this next question here, um, Mike, if you could take this one, is there a way we can find out the number of our staff that are using the wellness benefit you recently launched at no cost? They said no names, of course, but just to gauge utilization overall. Yeah, it's a, that's a good question as well. So <clears throat> what I'd recommend, uh, some of the ability for us to pass information back uh, depends on the size of the group because we need to maintain uh, HIPAA uh, and privacy guidelines, but I recommend reach out to your Blue Cross Blue Shield North Dakota account rep. Um, give the name of your employer group. And of course, there's quite a few different wellness products that most of our membership or all of our membership has access to. So there's Healthy Blue, there's now Well Beats, which we've seen a pretty good increase in utilization. Um, we should be able to pull some telehealth information client specific. Um, and then Learn to Live, it's a little harder to re report on that because it's a little more like an EAP. But shoot an email or give a call to your Blue Cross uh, account rep and uh, we'll see what we can find for you. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. Um, another question for you, Mike, is Blue Cross Blue Shield North Dakota notifying participants of these free services. So I think that's a question, you know, are they doing it directly or is it the employer's responsibility to notify the participants of these services? Yeah, our, since we're trying to do a quick reaction to the, the COVID-19 pandemic, we really prefer that we pass the information to employer groups and employer groups pass that down to their, to their employees and their families. Um, and that's typically been our pathway to communicate for self-funded groups. Typically, we've done direct membership mailings uh, to our fully insured lines. Um, but, right, but right now, we recommend, at a minimum, tell your employees to go to bcbsnd.com slash COVID-19 because there's additional information out there as well. Um, so there's a couple different resources where members can go and look. And at this point, we don't plan to do specific member notifications uh, for any of these new services at this time. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. Um, this question is a little more in-depth for you, Mike. Um, um, it, it just acknowledges that for telehealth on self-funded groups, um, AML is the group to go to. But if an employee is referred for testing, will they also need to use like a local telehealth portal to get scheduled for testing? And then will that result in a cost for them? Um, if it's if believed to be COVID-19 related, the cost share should be waived. Um, to be clear, right now there is no testing through telehealth. So likely if uh, you're talking to a telehealth provider, be it AML or primary or a local provider, they likely would, then would refer you to the best pathway for testing, um, which usually involves, uh, Dr. Glasner, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, scheduling appointments and making sure that people are maintaining safe distances and not lingering around in a provider setting longer than they have to. Um, so the cost share should be waived um, and there would be a referral for the in-person testing. Perfect. That Thank is you. correct. Um, Mike, you're popular here. So for the telehealth self-funded plans, is there a date that the cost sharing for employees will end um, where the members will be charged $69 again? Uh, not yet, good question. And that goes back to some of my earlier uh, answers that uh, at this time, it will be through the emergency period is when that coverage will continue for cost share waiving. Um, and if it were to go back to that, and the cost share can, the cost share when 
the emergency period ends will depend on your health plan and your benefit type. If you're a high deductible health plan, depending where you're at with your deductible, it would be $59, not $69. Um, but we also have employer groups who are self-funded that have a $0 copay, $20 copay. So we'd go back to your normal benefits after the emergency period ends. But our base cost of fee schedule specific to Amwell is $59, but local providers have different fee schedules for that too, some which are better than $59 and some which are greater. So once the emergency period ends, the normal benefit that you've had in place for telehealth uh, would uh, return to normal. Perfect, thank you, Mike. Uh, Chris, I have a question here from Paul, um, and he asks, is there a charge to uh, use a credit card? Oh, good question. So no, there's no charge. Um, we're accepting those fees on our end. So, but there is a, a threshold maximum and that's why we're allowing for the small employer groups to, to make their payments via, via credit card. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Chris, I have another question. Can you uh, speak more on the option if an employee is terminated? Um, they referred, you said they can call 280 blue, but can you explain that a bit more? Certainly. Um, so we have phone representatives that can help answer questions in regards to what kinds of coverage are available to you if you've lost your coverage and terminated as an employee at an employer group. Um, we've got, we can even help you go online to healthcare.gov to see if you qualify for, if they qualify for a, a the tax credit that's available through the government, because if they're not having any income come in, obviously they could very likely qualify for that tax credit. So we want to help them explore their options and then find the best fit for them too. So whether it be through healthcare.gov or just with us direct, we, we've got options both ways. Thanks, Chris. I have another question here for you. It's a little longer, but uh, with waiving probationary periods and relaxed eligibility requirements to enroll participants, do you foresee any issues with the required 1095 reporting at year end? Um, so they said an example would be the individual covered while not employed on layoff, currently not sure what code will be used to reflect the situation. Um, if they're referring to codes when they're filling out their forms that are created by the IRS, I guess I would revert back to the instructions regarding those forms and how to fill them out. But as far as waiving a probation period, that's really just letting us know as to their eligibility to come onto the health plan. So they could possibly have one to two months more on the health plan than they, than they had um, previously. And that would be reflected on the information that we would provide at the end of the year or usually in January for the year prior, the MEC information. I hope that helps answer the question. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. And I think that's a, another question where, you know, if it wasn't, uh, if we didn't get to all of it there, to reach out to your account representative um, and they can definitely track an answer down for you as well. So, yep. Yep. Um, so this question, um, I'm gonna preface with, you know, this is not necessarily legal advice, but, um, um, between maybe Chris and Dr. Glasner, um, just to give some guidance. If an employee has potential exposure to the virus, can we make them stay home from work until a test result is received? And that is a tougher question because I, uh, um, you know, we're, we're not, you know, able to give like legal advice, I don't think, on something like that. Um, but I don't know if Dr. Glaser, you would have a, any recommendation at all on that. Well, I don't know if you could, yeah, my wheels are spinning here. That's a tough question. I don't know if you can make somebody, generally you have a company policy that you would just say until your tested, <clears throat> test results come back, you, you just stay home. Just as if you were exposed to somebody who's, who has virus, you should stay home until, you, until you're tested or you go through a quarantine period. So my answer would be, can you make them? I think that would be up to your your, your, your own company policy, but uh, I don't think we can dictate that somebody has to stay home. Correct. Until their test results come back. Yeah, and I think a lot of these you'd have to look to you know state and CDC guidelines, um, and, you know, and refer to those federal guidelines. Um, another question here is um, for Mike: uh, Cost sharing is waived if AML services are used, but will they also be waived for the virtual e-visit appointments offered by Sanford? Good, good question. Um, uh, the answer is yes. If you 
if you see a local provider and or M, all those cost shares are waived and per, per the coverage types I talked about earlier. So for self-funded groups, it would be any COVID-19 related e-visits um, and any um, and in specific AMWELL, all urgent care visits. If you're a fully insured group, it doesn't matter if it's AMWELL or a local provider, uh, those cost shares are waived. And again, both of those would apply through the emergency period. And, and as additional context, uh, we, we've been studying telehealth utilization, which I said in that previous slide during the presentation has seen a remarkable uptake. And we think that's a good thing because it's, again, uh, <clears throat> keeping people out of a provider setting so it reduces exposure. Um, comes at probably a pretty good price point as compared to an office call. So there's some positives with the increase in utilization, and we're seeing a lot of utilization from local providers um, as well. So we've had a good uptick from our members and your employees uh, doing a conservative pathway to care uh, for most of those things that are not related to COVID-19. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. Um, Again, these are kind of lofty questions, Dr. Glasner, but I'm going to probably um, ask you to to address this to the best of your knowledge. And what is the process if an employee tests positive for the, the virus? Does the entire office need to be tested or does the office need to temporarily close? I think that answer would depend upon the contact tracing that occurs, you know, who's that employee around? And I don't think you have to shut down the entire office if nobody's been exposed to that individual. And that's kind of the contact tracing that the governor has been trying to roll out in the state. And so I think that answer would be, it depends. It depends on who you're around. It depends on your exposure to other people in the company. It depends on when you were considered exposed or when you were positive for the virus. Thank you, Dr. Glaser. I know those are hard questions to answer sometimes. Um, and I have one last one for you as well, Dr. Glasner. Uh, any suggestions on process to bring remotely working employees back into the office? Well, those are loaded questions. <laughs> yes. I think, you know, Blue Cross and Blue Shield has their disaster team working on that. And there's a phased in approach about bringing people back. And I think that, uh, you know, a well thought out phased in approach of where it's slow, where you don't bring everybody back at once is probably a good plan. Uh, every every situation is different because every company is different size. They have different contacts. So I think in Blue Cross, we're going to start to bring back, when we bring people back, we're going to bring people back uh, uh, in a phased approach. They're going to have restrictions to where they can go. They're going to have, um, you know, space between um, where they work. That's not always available wherever you're at. So I think that, you know, it's a little bit of an individualized answer. And I just think they should just be slow and cautious. And if you're functioning, working at home, and if, it, and if you're able to do your business, then I would keep doing that. You know, the peak in North Dakota, according to uh, Blue Cross Association, was the 14th of May. So we're just past the peak. And when social distancing, we flatten the curve and we're going to extend this curve out and we're going to see a long flat, uh, uh, long flat plateau of virus exposure. So I wouldn't be in a big rush to come back to work if you're functioning and able to do your work outside of the, outside of, your locate your physical location the longer you wait the better let the virus wave pass through the area it's going to be slow it's not going to be peak one day and all of a sudden it's gone we flatten the curve it's going to take a long time for this virus to pass and as we start interacting with other you might see a spike of that of the of the cases and then eventually that curve will go down so i don't think there's a set answer to this and i think i would just go slow and be cautious thank you for that dr glasner and the great insight there um, and thank you, Chris and Mike, as well, for all the information you shared with the employers today. Um, we have, um, oh, we did have one more question come in here. Um, what is the emergency period? Um, it says 12-31-2020 or 5-31-2020. So what's the date when you refer to emergency period for coverage? Is it 5-31 or 12-31? <laughs> Uh, good question, uh, and uh, that'll be dictated by what uh, our state regulators, as well as the uh, State Department of Health, deems that the pandemic is starting to slow. Um, so right now there is no hard date, and really the look back period for when the emergency period started was March 1st. Um, so we've got some tools in place that we've got uh, 
uh, like well beats right now that is through july 31st that could change but right now that's that's we'll reevaluate that but for all other services that time frame could be could be august 1st could be july 31st could be december 31st that won't be dictated by us that'll be dictated by the state um, but we'll continue to communicate uh, and i imagine we'll be doing some more of these webex specific to covid 19 to give updates as we learn but right now, the, the emergency period has no end date, and that'll be dictated by the, the North Dakota state. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. Um, I think it's a good time to mention that if any of you have any questions, please out, reach out to your account representative um, after this with those questions, and they will get back to you uh, in a timely fashion. Um, and again, those update resources, uh, bcbsnd.com slash COVID-19, um, and then keep an eye out for news from Blue emails. And then this will be available on YouTube for those of you who have joined us late. Um, after this webinar closes, there will be a survey that's gonna pop up and I'd encourage you to um, answer the questions. It, it'll take you literally a couple minutes and it just fuels content for the next webinar that we're gonna put on. So if you have any suggestions or anything you'd like to hear about, um, it gives you an opportunity to give us feedback and, and provide more great content to all the employers across the state here. Um, with that, um, we're gonna end the webinar. I just wanna thank you all for your continued trust as, in us as we go through this um, and everybody to have a great week. And thank you again, Chris, Mike, and Dr. Glasner.